In this lesson, we will be exploring probability. There's theoretical probability and experimental probability. Theoretical probability is mostly what we're going to be using in class. This is what we anticipate is going to happen if everything worked out perfectly, where experimental probability is what happens when you actually perform an experiment or try this out and see that it's not always perfect, but very close to our theoretical probability. So what is theoretical probability? It is the number of favorable outcomes divided by the total number of outcomes. And a lot of you have seen this, I'm sure, before. But let's review. What is the probability of rolling heads on a coin? So we know that a coin has two sides. It has heads and tails. So the total number of outcomes is two. But we're looking at the probability of rolling a heads and heads would be one of the two favorable outcomes. Now, probability can be written as a fraction. It can also be written as a decimal. It could also be written, actually, as a percent as well. What is the probability of rolling a four on a six-sided die? And students are very tempted to write four over six, but this is wrong, because there's only one four on a six-sided die. So we would write one, which is our favorable outcome. We have one four out of the six possible values that are on our six-sided die. What is the probability of getting an ace from a deck of cards? Well, I know that there's four aces in the deck of cards, so that would be four a total of 52 cards in the deck. What is the probability of rolling an eight on a six-sided die? Well, there are no eights on a standard six-sided die. So the probability would be 0 out of 6. What is the probability of rolling a number less than 7 on a 6-sided die? Well, all of the numbers are less than 7, so that would be 6 out of 6, which would be the same as 1. And 0 out of 6 is the same as 0. All probabilities, if you look at the probabilities that we just figured out, they must be expressed as values between 0 and 1. You will never have a negative probability. And so down here, this 0 is less than or equal to our favorable outcomes, which is less than or equal to 1, just means all of our probabilities will be between 0 and 1, always. Never negative, never greater than 1. All right, let's take a look at the next page here. Now this is the start of an investigation that we're going to look at. It says, what is the probability that there will be two girls in a family with three children? Now we've seen this tree diagram before, so I've just wrote it, written it out. We've got our first child could be a boy or a girl. The second child, if the first one's a boy, the second child could be a boy or a girl. If the first one's a girl, it could be a boy or a girl, and so on. And I've listed out all eight outcomes. Now the question is, what is the probability that there'll be two girls? So I'm going to look at all my outcomes that have two girls. So there's one, here's another one, and then there's one more. All the rest of these have more, either more or less than two girls. So how would we write this out as a probability? Well, the probability of a family having two girls out of three children well, the total number of outcomes was 8, and we have 3 out of a possible 8. Now, you can write it out as a probability, or if you want, you can write it out as a decimal, 0 0.0, not 0 0.0, 0 0.375, or you can write it out as a percent, 37.5 percent. Those are all the same representation. Often we'll talk about probability more as a decimal or as a fraction, but there's nothing wrong with a percent as well, and you'll see that coming up over and over again. Now we've done this, this would be the theoretical probability, right? This is what we um, would assume is going to happen. Now in terms of an experiment though, we're not going to, I mean, make people have babies. So we're going to do an experiment here where we're going to use coins and we'll do this in class and see how close we can get to the probability that we want. One of the definitions that's going to come up over and over again is this idea of a fair game. And that has to do with odds and probabilities as well. Now a fair game is a game in which all the players are equally likely to win. 
For example, tossing a coin to get heads or tails is a fair game. Why is that? Because you have an equal chance of getting a probability of heads and a probability of tails. Those are equal probabilities. So here's a game that we go through. We're going to read through this and decide is this a fair game or is this not a fair game? And we're going to use the probabilities to help us decide. So it says Sasha and Mike have to invent a fair game for a class project. Sasha suggests this game. Two people play. Each player has a container. Both players put three identical slips of paper, numbered one, two, and three into their own container. For each turn, both players draw one slip of paper from their container. Player one scores a point if the product of two numbers drawn is less than their sum. Player two scores a point if the product of their two numbers drawn is greater than their sum. Neither player gets a point if the product and sum are equal. After each turn, the players return their slip of paper to their container. A game consists of 10 turns. Is Sasha's game a fair game? Well, is playing Sasha's game once a good way to decide if it's fair? Well, no, because if we only played it once, we're not generating enough data to draw any conclusions, right? So once is not enough to get accurate results. Mike says that you can use theoretical probability to determine if the game is fair. Do you agree? Well, let's have a look. It says here are the results. Below is a sample space for the product, the sum, and point results of the game. So if we look here, that slip paper 1 and 1, when you multiply them together, you get a 1. When you add them together, you get a 2. So that's what they're looking at. So if the product is a 1 and the sum is a 1, then player 1 wins, right? So here, if we look at 2 and 2, that gives you a 4 and a 4, and that's a tie. So nobody gets any points. Here, we've got a 3 and a 4, and player 1 wins. So the only way player 2 can win is here. This is one of the instances, whoops, with a 6 and a 5, because the product of 3 and 2 is greater than the sum of 3 and 2. So that's how the game works, just to see it played out. So let's figure out the probabilities. The probability of player one winning. And let's figure out the probability of player two winning. And then to make it more complete, we should probably also get the probability of getting a tie. So we can see what all those probabilities are. So if probability of player one winning, we can see if this is our sample space, right? Player one wins one, two, three, four, five times. So that would be five out of how many? We've got a total of nine different outcomes. And then player two winning, would be three out of nine, and then a tie is our last one here, and that would be one out of nine. So you can see here that the game is not fair, and player one has a greater chance of winning. So to answer the question above here, it says, do you agree? Well, yes, we do agree. We used the theoretical probabilities, and we were able to figure out if it was a fair game or not. C says, when you play Sasha's game, would you rather be player one or player two? Well, obviously, if you want to win, you would want to be player one because player one has a greater chance of winning. Another type of question we like to ask is, what can you do to ensure that both players have an equal chance of winning? And then you can change the game around to adjust the probabilities. So you should be able to do that type of question as well. That's it for today's lesson. Thanks for joining me.